So we've got your first arch, which is your mandibular. Um, that's going to give off the trigeminal nerve, which is kind of the fine. The muscles are the muscles made of mastication. So we've got the muscle mastication, the mylohyoid, anterior bell of digastric, which is a muscle which opens your mouth, tensor tympani, which is going to be found inside the ear to dampen out sounds which are too, too loud for your ear. And then we've got um, tensor veli palatini, which is going to be helping with the swallowing mechanism. Skeletal structures from the first arch are the malleus and the incus, so it's the hammer and the anvil, which we've pointed to before. Ligaments, the anterior ligament of the malleus, and the stylo, the sphena, and dibula ligament. Moving on to the second arch, this is mainly associated with the higher bone. Um, you've got the facial nerve, kind of bone number seven, which comes from there. It's going to supply the muscles of facial expressions, the pedius, stylohyoid, and the posterior belly of digastric. The skeletal structures, the stapes, the stylo process coming from the skull down the palatal dagger. You've got the lesser cornea of the hyoid bone and the upper part of the hyoid bone. So this is that top half if you cleave the hyoid bone in half. And then the ligament is the stylo hyoid ligament. Coming to the third arch, the third arch is glossopharyngeal nerve. Glossopharyngeal nerve don't do much, just the stylopharyngeus. It's going to supply the greater cornea of the higher bone and it's also going to give off the lower part of the higher bone. So this is the bottom half. But lastly is the fourth arch, which is going to give off your phagus nerve. And the bits of concern here are the superior laryngeal branch, which is going to supply the larynx, and also the recurrent laryngeal branch, which is the two nerves which supply the larynx. It's going to give off these structures of muscle, like a thyroid, the beta villi palatini, strictors of the pharynx, the intrinsic muscles of the pharynx, of the larynx, and the striated muscle of the esophagus. So, as you can see, this is all to do with swallowing and also to do with the constricting of the larynx, which is a protective mechanism. That's the larynx's main job. The other function of the larynx is in phonation, for, which allows you to hear what I'm saying just now. So that's going to be the responsibility of the vagus now, through the fourth arch. The cartilages are mainly the cartilages associated with the larynx themselves, so you've got the thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, which is shaped like a signet ring, the retinoid, which are little two ladle handles sticking out over the um, cricoid um, cartilage bridge. You've got the cornicular cartilage, which are the two horns stuck on top of the retinoids, and the cuneiform, which means wedge which are just wedged into that membrane between the um, epiglottis and the original cartilages in the larynx. So, the formation of the face. How is the face formed? Well, if you look back to what I said before, embryology is all about the formation of the disc. After you form the disc, the disc then splits into three layers, a trilaminar disc, and then you begin to fold. As you begin to fold, the, A, the end point of folding is the midline fusion structures. And nowhere more perfect is there to explain this than the face. So on the face, what we have is we have a frontal nasal prominence, which is there in green. We have this bit here, which is your maxillary prominence. And then we have the mandibular prominence. And um, underneath that, we begin to have here your second pharyngeal arch the other arches coming down from that. Now let's just follow down what happens here. So, here's your frontal nasal prominence. Let's just look at what happens. First of all, you get these little two pits forming, which are called your nasal placode. And you can kind of see this is the beginnings of my nose here. And then I've got something just a bit more recognisable. This looks like a flaring, flaring, um, is of a, of a raging bull. There we go, quite wide apart. So we've then formed basically these two rims, which are called medial and lateral nasal prominences. Okay, so it's a nice rim structure now, and a hole in the middle, which is called your nasal pit. And then what happens is these two median ones, median means towards the big line, will fuse and come together. And as they push together, they blend together. But look what's happening in the meantime. Here in yellow, 
to my maxillary pockets, and that slides together and even closer and closer and closer, closer still, and closer they come and fuse. Okay, they fuse, and as they fuse, so too have these um, nasal prominences fused here. And that's which is the filtrum of my lip, okay? So this is my upper lip now formed from the closing of my two nares, my nostrils, my nose, and also the closing of two of these halves of my maxillary problems coming together. And that forms my upper lip. And I'm sure you can see how amazing it is that this whole process just happens to happen just in order. Program, and you can see that like computer programs, sometimes you can have a glitch, and when you do get a glitch, the consequences can be quite, quite varied in terms of whether these things manage to marry up or not, and that leads to things like our cleft palates and also hair lips, um, which are things we'll talk about in the course. So. This is just to show you some scanning electro microscopy of um, some of these uh, embryos in, um, in situ. So what we have here is, this is the whole structure when it's begun to fold up. Okay, so it's folded, this is the head end folded over cranially, tail end folded cordially. We've got here, just to orientate you, so our lower limb bud, this is where our legs are going to come from. This is our um, tail effectively which is going to shrink down because as you know we don't have tails because these are animals these will carry on going and getting longer um, this here is going to be our upper limb buds so this is where our arms are going to come from and that there is our heart remember the heart starts up quite far up north near the head and it descends down as it descends down it brings the diaphragm down with it and then in here this is this area where you have these what look like fish gills okay so it's a, like the slits here these are these fish gills that is what we call our pharyngeal arches, so they're arching round like that, arching round. Um, and this is the head, nasal placode, there's nasal pits, and this optic vesicle, these are the bulges which are going to become the eyes. So now this is it looking right at you, in your face. So what we've got here is the eyes beginning to form here, these are the um, those swellings where the eyes are going to come from. This is that maxillary prominence. You see it's still quite far wide apart here. It's got a lot of bit of journey to do to meet in the middle. This is the mandibular prominence. This is that second pharyngeal arch, third and then fourth. And what we've done here, you see this is a roughened edge here, is we've sliced across here. So you otherwise this will be coming right out at you into, into the camera. There's our umbilical vein. We're getting nutrients from my slap bank.